now on WKRG News 5. After nearly 24 hours on the run, police in Washington State arrest the man they said killed five people in a mall Friday night. And was he carrying a gun or not? Police in Charlotte released their video of the shooting of Keith Scott as the investigation and protests continue. Record setting heat yesterday and another hot day today. I'll have your full forecast coming up. From WKRG News 5, the Gulf Coast News Leader, the news starts now. Good morning. Thanks for getting up with News 5 this morning. I'm Chad Petrie. I don't know who's watching, but I'm glad you are. First on five, police in Washington State have arrested the man they say opened fire inside a mall Friday night, killing five people. The suspect is 20-year-old Arkan Satine. Satine immigrated from Turkey and is a legal U.S. resident, according to an initial police investigation. He was captured last night by an officer who, who recognized him from surveillance video. He was captured in Oak Harbor, where he lived. The victims, four women and a man, ranged in age from a teenager to senior citizens. We suffered a devastating loss of five treasured members of our community who had done nothing more than what we all have done on any given day. Police say Satin was not armed when they took him into custody and that he was acting, in their words, zombie-like. So far, they've given no motive for the apparently random shootings. After days of protests, police in Charlotte, North Carolina, have released dash cam and body cam video of the shooting of Keith Scott. Now, dash cam video shows the clearest picture of what happened. Scott gets out of his vehicle, surrounded by officers, and slowly walks backwards. Then shots ring out and he collapses. Body camera video less clear. It shows Scott from a different angle, but in neither video is it clear if he had a gun in his hand or not. Police released still photos of a gun and holster they say were recovered from the scene and had Scott's fingerprints on it. Police say the officers were in the area to serve a warrant and notice marijuana and then a gun inside Scott's SUV. That's when they took action to arrest him. At every encounter, people can make a decision, right, to follow lawful, loud, verbal commands and prevent some things like this. Protesters in Charlotte, who had been demanding the release of the video, took to the streets again last night. Several hundred people walking in protest for the third straight night. Charlotte was under a midnight curfew, and there were no incidents to report. Mobile County Sheriff's investigators are investigating a Saturday morning shooting that left one man dead. As News 5's Emily DeVoe reports, so far, no charges have been filed. When 20-year-old Janome Rice was shot and killed on this gravel road early Saturday morning, investigators say he was driving a stolen car. At this time, we don't believe the parties involved knew each other, and we believe that the um, incident was actually a theft. A man named Stephen Bell had reported his car stolen earlier in the week and called 911 after seeing it drive by him Saturday morning. Mr. Bell contacted the Mobile County Sheriff's Office and advised that he was possibly behind his stolen vehicle and requested the assistance of law enforcement. He had previously requested the assistance of another agency, but they had entered our jurisdiction, and from there we took over, and he was actually on the phone with the operators from the sheriff's office. Bell followed the car until the driver pulled out onto South Street, which is near Spice Pine Road. And the driver of the vehicle turned the vehicle around, and the vehicle was now facing him. At that point, Mr. Bell opened up his door, and the driver of the vehicle, who is now the victim, got out of the vehicle and approached Mr. Bell. Investigators say Rice appears to have been armed and that's when Bell pulled out a gun of his own and opened fire. We don't know whether or not the shooting was a case of self-defense or hot tempers. Either way, a grand jury will decide if it moves forward. We consult with the Mobile County District Attorney's murder team and they decide from there what we should do with the case. Although the DA's office isn't pressing charges right now, the investigation is still open and things could change if more information about the shooting surfaces. In 8 Mile, Emily DeVoe, News 5. Trenholm Rice, the man who died, had a criminal history and was arrested just last month for trespassing and receiving stolen property. Now, Melissa Constanzer with First Alert Weather. Just a little before 6.05, Melissa Constanza here We're with our first check of the forecast. I was listening to Thomas Keyboy last night talking about the record-breaking temperatures we had yesterday. Yeah. Could this happen again today? Yes, it could. Oh, <laughs> I'm geez. not going to lie. I'm sorry. It, it is could. like 10 degrees above average right now. 
Yeah, it is certainly well above average. In fact, we have had, we should be in the mid 80s this time of year, and we've been in the mid 90s. So, yes, you're right, 10 degrees above average, and today we will be above average. The question is, is it enough to tie or break those records? I think some places will, maybe others don't, but it's still going to be a hot one today. All Sorry. Right, we'll keep an eye on it, but man, that's. <laughs> yeah, not I know. Great. Probably not what you want to hear for the first week in the fall. And today, again, it is going to be hot. We start off though quiet, at least that's the good news. We take a look from our Orange Beach camera live in HD. And as you look off towards the east, you are seeing a little bit of sunlight coming over that horizon. At least it's starting to get bright there. And our Alpha Insurance camera showing a little bit of haze and humidity. As you look north, up Interstate 65. Temperatures right now hanging on to the 70s and, yes, a few 60s in here too. 68 in Evergreen as well as 67 in Crestview. But a lot of us in the 70s, 74 for Mobile and Gulf Shores at this time. 70 in Leakesville. And those numbers all bound to go up today. One thing that we will also see go up are chances of rain. Right now, we're dry across the entire area. Although, I will say from our Dolphin Island camera, we have seen these thunderstorms just off the coast here, continuing to produce a nice light show. So you're seeing that if you're looking off the coast of Gulf Shores. But overall, things pretty quiet. And on land, we are dry. Now, again, we will have the chance for showers, thunderstorms. Even yesterday, there was some hail. I think we could see maybe a few severe thunderstorms. But it is really going to be the heat and humidity once again today. That is the big story. Of course, does it ever change? Well, there is a change in your extended forecast, and I'll have that coming up in a few minutes. Thank you, Melissa. Chalk up a thrilling win for the South Alabama Jaguars. South's defense stopped Dontrell Taylor short of the end zone on a two-point conversion attempt in overtime to give the Jags the 41-40 win. Dallas Davis completed a nine-yard touchdown pass to Tyrone Williams with 16 seconds left in regulation to tie the game at 34. It was Davis's first TD pass of the night after throwing four interceptions. South snapped its two-game losing streak and is gearing up for Saturday's game at home against San Diego State. And we'll hear from head coach Joey Jones a little later on in the broadcast. Meanwhile, the Auburn Tiger fans, they'll remember the name Daniel Carlson for a long time. Carlson made six field goals yesterday as Auburn upset number 18 LSU 18-13 at Jordan-Hare Stadium. Carlson is a perfect 12-for-12 on the season and has been one of the few offensive bright spots for Auburn. His six field goals ties the Auburn record held by Al Del Greco. He set that back in 1982 against Kentucky. And it was a big win for the Tigers and Coach Gus Malzahn, who lost earlier this season to Clemson and Texas A&M. But this win almost didn't happen. So with time running out and LSU threatening, quarterback Danny Etling rolls out and hits DJ Chark for the end zone. And apparent touchdown, the LSU team, they're going nuts. But hold on, the play under review. The referees say Etling didn't get the playoff in time. So very controversial ending to an exciting game. And it was Auburn's first home conference win in two years. And the first time in eight years the Tigers won without scoring a touchdown. Decidedly less exciting was Alabama's 48-0 win over Kent State. Alabama QB Jalen Hurts so good, ran for one touchdown and passed for another. Backup tailback Joshua Jacobs also scored a pair of touchdowns. Alabama led 41-0 at halftime. On the downside, the Tide's leading rusher, Damian Harris, went down with an ankle injury in the first quarter. He was carted off the field. Alabama opens SEC play next week at home against Kentucky. We'll check this out. A photographer trying to catch a perfect shot takes a shot to the face. We'll show you that when we come back. Time now, 6.09 on this Sunday morning. Mornings are busy getting kids ready for school, getting off to work, getting across the bayway. We start early every morning to try and save you some time and make your mornings easier. We keep our eye on the traffic, so if there are any wrecks, backups, or delays, you're the first to know about it. Five things you need to know before you head out the door this morning. Count on us in the morning, on air, online, and on your phone. Whatever's happening right now, you're going to know. Why? Because mornings matter to you. Anyone with type 2 diabetes knows how it feels to see your numbers go up, despite your best efforts. But what if you could turn things around? What if you could 
Love your numbers. Discover Once Daily Invokana. It's the number one prescribed SGLT2 inhibitor that works to lower A1C. A pill taken just once in the morning, Invokana is used along with diet and exercise to significantly lower blood sugar in adults with type 2 diabetes. In fact, it's been proven to be more effective at lowering A1C than Genuvia. Invokana works around the clock by reducing the amount of sugar allowed back into the body and sending some sugar out through the process of urination. And while it's not for lowering systolic blood pressure or weight loss, it may help you with both. Invokana can cause important side effects, including dehydration, which may cause you to feel dizzy, faint, lightheaded, or weak upon standing. Other side effects may include kidney problems, genital yeast infections, changes in urination, high potassium, increases in cholesterol, risk of bone fracture, or urinary tract infections possibly serious. Serious side effects may include ketoacidosis, which can be life-threatening. Stop taking and call your doctor right away if you experience symptoms, or if you experience symptoms of allergic reaction such as rash, swelling, or difficulty breathing or swallowing. Do not take Invokana if you have severe liver or kidney problems or are on dialysis. Tell your doctor about any medical conditions and medications you take. Using Invokana with the sulfonylurea or insulin may cause low blood sugar. It's time to turn things around. Lower your blood sugar with Invokana. Imagine loving your numbers. There's only one Invokana. Ask your doctor about it by name. This season, Steve Harvey redefines cool. You're so handsome. You heard her. You heard the lady. Weekdays at 4 on WKRG News 5. Where to you, Gulf Coast? Oh, look at those thunderstorms. Looking south down the Mobile Riverfront this morning from one of our News 5 Gulf Quest cameras. Checking out one of those thunderstorms over the Gulf of Mexico this morning, over the waters this morning. And uh, looking fierce, looking warm out there this morning as well, Melissa. Very warm. Yes, another hot, humid day for you. Uh, record setting yesterday, likely again the t today. All right, Auburn fans waking up this morning to a very controversial win, but did you see this part of the game where a photographer gets hit in the face with the kickoff? No, I haven't. What, what happened here? Well, uh, this is uh, one where this poor girl just is in the end zone, tries to catch the kickoff, but ends up getting hit in the face. Here it comes, coming down. And this is photographer. Uh, she's with the Auburn Athletic Department. Uh, it turns out, Ashley Ward. Turns out she made a bet with one of the managers that if uh, it came her way, she would catch a kickoff in the back of the end zone. She caught it, but with her face. Uh, don't worry, though. Wasn't seriously hurt. Uh, in an interview with another TV station, she says that her face and her words was just a little red, but she is okay. <laughs> yeah, it looks like she kind of fell down there at the end. and uh, yeah. well, A natural I guess it could, reaction. Again, it could have been worse. It could have been worse. She seemed to be a good sport about it, but man, I, I don't know. That's why. That's why when you stand on the sidelines, there, it, it's a. It's it can a be tough risky. Thing. It's risky. Yeah, I don't usually like to do it that no, much. No, no. Uh, as from uh, things getting hit in the face to faces you don't necessarily want out there, a hacker is reportedly trying to sell photos stolen from Pippa Middleton. Now she's the sister of Kate Middleton, the Duchess of Cambridge. According to Britain's Press Association, about 3,000 pictures are believed to have been illegally taken from Pippa Middleton's iCloud account. The images are said to include pictures of Pippa and her fiancé getting ready for their wedding. Also pictures of the Duchess of Cambridge and Prince William's children. The Palace Press Office isn't commenting on the matter for now. The anonymous seller contacted media organizations demanding a minimum of $65,000. Pippa and James Matthews are expected to marry next year. And this is kind of a common trend, you know, uh, hackers are getting into those iCloud accounts of famous people. Oftentimes, passwords are not changed from defaults, which is really one of the ways that they get into these treasure troves of really personal photos. Yeah, that and I mean, if you're like me, you wonder, well, the cloud, what goes up, where does it go? It's just kind of, it's magical. So it seems like it is another thing that while it's well secured, could be broken into as well. One thing we wanted to touch on as well, from a famous face to a famous writer, one of the two most famous writers to come out of Monroeville, Truman Capote. Julian's Auctions in LA announced Saturday that Capote's ashes contained in a Japanese wooden box have sold for $45,000, well above the original estimate, which the auction house reported at $4,000. Mm. 
The ashes are dated from August 28th, 1984, days after the author of In Cold Blood died at the age of 59. Oh, that's that's an interesting story, though, because, again, they weren't expecting those ashes to go for as much as they did, so it's, it just shows how significant he was in the world. Right, a very, very big buy there. Now, it's going to be a warm day today, again today. I can't believe how warm it was yesterday. Why is it continuing to be so warm? I'm sorry. It's, it's just the pattern that we are in. And we start off with these sunny skies and they help us warm up pretty quickly. So let's take a live look at what we got going on from Dolphin Island this morning. And as you look off towards the east, you see brighter skies and yes, even a few clouds out there. And those clouds have actually been thunderstorms. That's been better viewed actually from our Gulf Quest Maritime Museum. As you look off towards the south, you can actually see that thunderstorm off in the distance. There it is lighting up your screen and yes it is going to be another hot and humid day again our radar dry this morning it's just those thunderstorms further off towards the south that you're seeing putting on a great light show anywhere from about Dolphin Island probably on into Pensacola Beach that's again well offshore so if you want to get out on the water this morning even heading into this afternoon not a bad day to do it but there will be afternoon thunderstorms so just remember to keep an eye on that those winds will become southerly along the coastline and seas only around a foot right now starting off in the 70s 70 in Leakesville 74 in Mobile as well as Gulf Shores it's 77 in Pensacola 68 in Evergreen we get into the lower and mid 90s Again, yesterday we set records in Mobile and Pensacola. Today those records stand around 92 and 94 degrees respectively. So it's possible that we see them tie or be broken once again this afternoon because I do think it's going to be another hot day, especially inland where you have t those highs in the mid-90s. So again, keep that in mind. The record in Mobile, 94 back in, in uh, 1961 in Pensacola. You only had to get to 92 to tie that record today. So again, it's going to be well above average and hot and sticky. The tropics out there, got a few things that we want to talk about here. Tropical Storm Carl, likely to become a hurricane. It's nowhere near land. It may become a hurricane later today, but then it'll enter cold waters and actually lose its tropical characteristics that we typically think of with a tropical system. So it won't be a hurricane for long if it becomes one later today. Lisa. There's nothing left of Lisa. It's just remnants there. And as you look then off the coast of Africa, that is our next disturbance. That could become a tropical system in the next five days. And if it does so, it may even become the name of Matthew here as it gets organized. So we'll keep an eye on that. Nothing to worry about, though, along the Gulf Coast, other than our daily pattern of sunshine through the morning, then after lunch, scattered showers and thunderstorms. Yesterday, we had some reports of hail in certain areas. Can't rule that out today, but it's not very likely as those highs get back into the lower and mid-90s. A hot and steamy day for you. Those winds will start northerly and then kick in from the south. Tomorrow, similar. I think there might even be a slightly higher chance of rain. It's Tuesday when we start to see a front come through. That's going to create a big change for us later in the week where we dry out and maybe even get a little cooler. Thank you, Melissa. A former Alabama crewman returns to the battleship next week. The story of Tom Abels, the SDSU Aztecs, and how they all tie together next. Time now, 618 on this Sunday morning. I really like that you guys are really up on the weather. Make sure to watch CW55 News at 9. You know your heart loves Mega Red Omega 3s. But did you know your eyes, your brain, and your joints really love them too? Introducing Mega Red Advanced 4 in 1. Just one soft gel delivers mega support. I'm no marketing guru, but this guy is. He's from Madison Avenue. He likes to say things like, Raised without antibiotics. That's a phrase he invented to make chickens sound safer. And it doesn't mean much because by federal law, all chickens must be clear of antibiotics before they leave the farm. I got more. Mom approved. Caffeine free. We think Mr. Marketing Guru would fit in better at a different chicken company. Ooh, I got it. Gluten free. All chickens gluten free. I don't think that's... Okay, no it is. Fresh, delicious chicken from Sanderson Farms. Tough Shed has been crushing the elements since 1981. For buildings and value that can't be beat, step up to an American original. Step up to Tough Shed. Tough Shed has the quality and selection customers love. 
Choose from sheds, garages, backyard studios, weekenders, and our newest product line, cabin shells. See the building that best suits your needs at ToughShed.com. Call Tough Shed today at 1-800-BUY-TOUGH or visit us online at ToughShed.com. The Vascular Center presents the new you. Be fun, be flirty, be sporty, be confident, be energetic, and most importantly, be pain-free. Call the Vascular Center today. Remove varicose veins with a minimally invasive procedure usually covered by insurance. Dr. Glenn Esses is a board-certified vascular surgeon with over 35 years of training and experience. The Vascular Center has offices in Mobile, Daphne, and Atmore. Call the Vascular Center today, 445-0075, or visit mobilevascular.com. Folks, the vote for Hanks is a vote for great value. With your support, we'll give you unbeatable bedroom prices. Our campaign means dining sets at the best prices ever. Castor voted Hanks for a better night's sleep. And depend on 48 months interest-free financing. This message has been approved and paid for by Hanks Fine Furniture. Awards are great, but I'm more than just a trophy. I'm not sitting around collecting deaths. I'm moving forward, thinking about all the steps that I haven't taken yet. What helps keep me going? Oikos Triple Zero Greek Non-Fat Yogurt with 15 grams of protein, zero added sugar, zero fat, zero artificial sweeteners. Zero holding me back. I'm Cam Newton, and I'm unstoppably myself. Oikos Triple Zero, be unstoppably you. Brought to you by Brookside Chocolate. Discover Brookside. Welcome back. Next weekend, the USA Jaguars will host the San Diego State University Aztecs at Land People Stadium. In the stands will be a lifelong Aztecs fan with a special mobile connection. I talked to that fan in California via FaceTime. When it comes to Aztecs football, you'll find no bigger fan than Tom Abels. Even at age 90, and I stand, except during timeouts, I sit down, but I stand through the whole game. Everybody thinks I'm crazy, and I may be, but I still enjoy doing it. It's something he's been doing for 70 years, racking up an attendance streak of 600 straight games. But a month before he enrolled at SDSU, he finished a tour aboard a very familiar ship. And the weekend he's here for the game, he'll also be coming to Battleship Park to check out the ship he once served on. I want to get back down way below the main deck and be in my engine room, make sure that everything is there, including the weird coffee maker we have. Tom Abels gets a chance to revisit a place he called home and work more than seven decades later and then take in a game that's been a big part of his life since leaving the Navy. A very emotional thing for me. And combine it with the game, two things that are a big part of my life, you can imagine how special that whole day will be. The game will be his 774th, and Abels thinks he can get to 1,000. Last year, the Jaguars upset the Aztecs in a 34-27 overtime win. Tom Abels said his Aztecs can bounce back this year. Well, coming up, crawfish and music, big parts of the annual Daphne Jubilee Festival. Of course, arts and crafts there as well. More later in the broadcast, time now 623 on this Sunday morning. The Big Bang Theory, weekdays at 3 on WKRG News 5. You can't choose who sits next to you. But at least you can choose two of your favorites from McDonald's McPick 2 menu. Make it a great morning for just four bucks with two of your breakfast favorites, like the Egg McMuffin, Sausage McMuffin with Egg, or Hotcakes. McPick 2 for $4 at McDonald's. Get your game face on, because everything's on sale at Palmer's Toyota Superstore. Palmer's is selling off our entire 2016 starting lineup. Drive Corollas for $129 a month. Catch a great deal on over a thousand new and used vehicles. Plus, the 2017s are rolling in and on sale. Drive 2017 Camrys for $149 a month. $149 a month. Come see us today at Palmer's Toyota Superstore, the family store. You gotta see this place. Taste the many sides of Brookside. Oh, I'm not feeling good. 
Smooth dark chocolate outside. Exotic fruit flavor inside. Brookside, for all your sides. Dogs sure can be messy. But with NexGuard, their flea and tick killer doesn't have to be. NexGuard, the vet's number one choice for dogs, is a delicious beef-flavored chew that kills both fleas and ticks. So it's easy to give, easy to take. Reported side effects include vomiting, itching, diarrhea, lethargy, and lack of appetite. Use with caution in dogs with a history of seizures. Why mess around? For powerful flea and tick protection, ask your vet about NexGuard, the number one choice of vets for their dogs and yours. Baldwin Denture Center proudly offers one-day denture service. Stop whistling Dixie. We have affordable prices so you save money. Arrive in the morning and leave that afternoon with your new dentures. Not all dentures are created equal. Feel the difference. For fast, affordable care, call Baldwin Denture Center. South Alabama football hosts the top 25 ranked San Diego State Aztecs. Saturday, October 1st. Kickoff is set for 7 o'clock. Broadcast live on ESPN News. Tickets start at $20. Purchase online at usajaguars.com. Jags and Aztecs this Saturday. Go Jags! This is everything. Honey Bunches of Oats. It's all of this, 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 and this. It's the mother of all cereals. It's that, and that, and all of that. It's the most cereal rific cereal in all of history. Yeah, it's that good. Honey Bunches of Oats. This is everything. Now, Melissa Constanzer with First Alert Weather. 626 on a Sunday morning. We take a live look from Gulf Coast Maritime Museum towards downtown. You can see actually bright blue overhead, and that's the sky lighting up from clear skies and that sun getting ready to rise. Also seeing dry roads out there. Looking pretty good downtown this morning where we do have the rain well offshore. That's where things have been lighting up, so we actually have been dry anywhere on land this morning. Right now, the temperatures still hanging out in the 70s and even 60s in some locations. 68 for Evergreen, 67 in Crestview, 74 in Mobile, and 71 in Pascagoula. Your forecast today, though, takes those numbers way higher, back into the lower and mid-90s. Yesterday, we broke some records. It's not out of the question again today with those high temperatures where they are, and we'll keep that chance of rain. Rain chances today around 30%. That means a few scattered showers and thunderstorms during the afternoon. Some of them were stronger yesterday. There could be a few stronger ones again today. Thank you, Melissa. A park several years in the making is dedicated in Mobile County. The story of Crenshaw Park later in the broadcast. Time now, 627 on this Sunday morning. Don't miss the 5th Annual Festival of Flavor, October 8th, downtown Foley. We all need help now and then, someone who can make sense of all the overwhelming decisions dealing with health care issues. Community Insurance Partners is here to do just that. We take the time to walk you through the details so you can make a confident choice. We'll even check to see if you qualify for additional assistance for federal, state, or local programs. Call us today and one of our many licensed agents can visit you in your home or at our office located on Cottage Hill Road. Community Insurance Partners. Healthcare is our business. Eyeglass World salutes Haley, who could have booked a nice hotel off the interstate, but for half the price, booked a cabin off the grid. Not surprisingly, Haley shops at Eyeglass World, where she gets the style she loves and her glasses the very same day, all for an incredibly low price. Two pairs for just $78. Eyeglass World. See yourself smile. See yourself save. They say good things come in small packages, and Midtown Pharmacy is a perfect example. For over 30 years, Midtown Pharmacy has been serving the people of Mobile. Locally owned and operated, we take service to another level. No long waits, prompt answers to questions, and always service with a smile. And check out our new app where you can order refills with the touch of a button. Go to Pharmacy Health Connect and download the app. Then set it to Midtown Pharmacy Mobile. Midtown Pharmacy, locally owned and locally loved. 2152 Airport Boulevard near the Loop. We blindfolded Dale and told him to find the chicken with no antibiotics. Thing is, by federal law, all chickens must be clear of antibiotics before they leave the farm. How's it going, Dale? Working on it. Some chicken companies try to get you to spend more money by using labels like Rays without antibiotics. At Sanderson Farms, we don't believe in gimmicks like that. Well, how'd I do? No antibiotics to worry about here. Hmm. That was easy. Fresh, delicious chicken from Sanderson Farms. Real people steal people. From full-time professionals to weekend warriors, they trust steel and servicing steel dealers. 
Right now, hardworking steel blowers start at $139.95, and legendary steel chainsaws start at $179.95. Find your steel dealer at steeldealers.com or search STIHL. Real people, steel people. Join us. When you're suffering from chest congestion, try Mucinix 12 Hour. Mucinix is absorbed 60% faster than store brands and lasts a full 12 hours. Relieve chest congestion with Mucinix and enjoy living well. Family Feud, weekdays at 4 on WKRG News 5. Morning to you, Gulf Coast. Here's a quick look outside one of our News 5 Golf Quest cameras. Taking a look at downtown Mobile and the tallest building in Alabama, the RSA Tower. Looking like a pretty good but fairly warm day as well. Thank you so very much for watching us on this Sunday morning. I'm Chad Petrie, and police in Washington State say they've arrested the man responsible for killing four women and a man inside a mall in Burlington, Washington. Police caught up with 20-year-old Archon Satine last night in the city of Oak Harbor. That's about 30 miles from Burlington. An officer saw him walking down the street and recognized Satine from surveillance video. Now, police say that video shows the shooter arriving at the mall unarmed, then entering Macy's 10 minutes later with a hunting style rifle. The victims range in age from a teenager to seniors. One witness was in a dressing room trying on a dress when the shots rang out. When I slipped it on is when I heard the boom, 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 and I said, some crazy fools out there trying to knock the building down. That's how hard it sounded. It didn't sound like a pop. It didn't sound like what you'd think you would hear. Just boom, boom, boom. Satine is an immigrant from Turkey who has a criminal record in Washington State that includes arrests for domestic violence, assault, Court records show Satine was told by a judge last year that he was not to possess a firearm. So far, no motive for the shootings has been released. Police in Charlotte, North Carolina have released dash cam and body cam video of a shooting that led to riots and unrest in Charlotte. Dash cam video shows Kenneth Scott stepping out of his vehicle, surrounded by officers, and slowly walking backwards. Then shots ring out. He collapses. The body camera video is shot from a different angle, but it's less clear. You really can't tell if Scott is armed, but police released still photos of a gun and holster. They say were recovered from the scene and had Scott's fingerprints on it. Meanwhile, closer to home, Mobile County Sheriff's investigators are looking into a homicide in 8 Mile. Detectives say the shooting happened on South Street, which is near Spice Pond Road. They say 38-year-old Stephen Bell had reported his car stolen earlier in the week and that he saw it pass by him on Highway 45. Now, he followed and called police while he was on the line. The stolen car, driven by a 20-year-old Trenum Rice, pulled over on South Street. Now, Bell says Rice got out and walked toward him with a weapon. That's when Bell says he pulled out a gun of his own and shot him. The conclusion of any of our homicide investigations, we consult with the Mobile County District Attorney's murder team, and they decide from there what we should do with the case. At this time, we don't believe the parties involved knew each other, and we believe that the um, incident was actually a theft. We don't believe they knew each other. A grand jury will decide if charges will be filed. If you have any information in this case, sheriff's investigators want to hear from you. A funeral for a friend and protector in Connecticut County. He was originally from Monroeville. Corrections officer Kenneth Bettis died in the line of duty. Services were held in Watley, Alabama at the Mackey Branch No. 1 Baptist Church. Fellow law enforcement officers, friends and family turned out to pay their respects for corrections officer Kenneth Bettis. Again, he died last week after being attacked by an inmate at the beginning of the month in Holman Prison. Hundreds packed the Mackey Branch Church for the service. Bettis was remembered as a dedicated family man and team player who was always smiling. He was an Army National Guard veteran and a true Auburn fan. The casket was blue, trimmed in orange.
Today, September 25th, is National Day of Remembrance for murder victims and their families. And it's a day to pay tribute and talk about anyone affected by violent crime. The annual event happens this evening at Cooper Riverside Park from 6 to 7. There will be a fellowship time for family members to meet each other. And from 7 to 8, there will be a remembrance service where victims have the chance to talk about the loved ones they've lost. They ask family members to bring a photo of the people they've lost along with a favorite flower and a candle. A deer is safe this morning thanks to a group of people who took matters into their own hands. Now this happened in Waterloo, Iowa where a young deer got caught up in a rain swollen Cedar River. It was swept away in the rough water, ended up exhausted at the foot of a bridge. Now, Good Samaritans, they called 911 to try to get police or the fire department to help without any luck. So a couple of guys rigged up a harness, lowered a man to the deer, and lifted the deer to safety. The deer wasn't complaining either. The men say they were going to make sure the deer was okay, then release it back into the woods. Now, Melissa Constanzer with First Alert Weather. We start things off with a look up. Let's go back to your tropics and the tropics still very active at this time. Tropical storm Carl expected to become a hurricane later today, but it won't be a hurricane for very long because it's actually continuing to track through the north central Atlantic. Nowhere near land, but tracking into colder water. So if we see that become a hurricane today, possibly tomorrow or even Tuesday, it will be nothing. In fact, it'll just be what's left of Carl. Then you look at this. This is what's left of Lisa. Again, nothing, just a couple of thunderstorms out there. What we are watching is this area down here, this X. That is our next area of investigation, which basically means we have computer models tracking it, but it is possible. In fact, it's likely that it will become a tropical system in the next five days. But if you're on our beaches, no worries out there. There's just a few thunderstorms that we're going to continue to monitor for the afternoon as highs work their way near 90 along the beaches, but it's going to be a lot hotter inland. Low risk for rip currents, which means a lot of green and yellow flags flying. Yesterday, the beach was the place to be because anywhere else it was extremely hot. In fact, those temperatures record setting for both Pensacola and Mobile. 97 in Pensacola it was 96 in Crestview, 95 in Evergreen and Pascagoula and Mobile also hitting 95. So we were easily in the mid 90s in a lot of locations and we start off this morning much like yesterday morning, which means we could do it again today. We start off quiet this morning as you look from Gulf Quest Maritime Museum towards downtown over the bay to Daphne. Looking at maybe a little bit of haze, there are a few small areas of patchy fog, but overall we're fairly quiet for the morning as you look off towards the west. Beautiful shot there from Daphne and our Alpha Insurance camera. Radar right now very dry across our entire area. It's been those thunderstorms offshore that have put on a good light show for anywhere from Dolphin Island to Pensacola Beach. So if you're looking off the coast this morning, that's what you're seeing. But again, it's not near us. In fact, most of the southeast relatively quiet and relatively dry. Do note though, there is this line of thunderstorms further off towards the west. That is a cold front setting up to move through, but it won't be moving through today. So today we start off in the 70s this morning, a pretty mild start for us, 74 for Mobile. That's above average. And today, a lot of the southeast becoming above average. Look at this, lower to mid 90s for anywhere from about Mississippi through most of Alabama, even parts of the Louisiana and Florida coastline dealing with the heat today is going to be on once again. And a closer look to home, what you can expect for your highs, Again, lower to mid 90s, mid 90s inland, lower 90s along the coast, hot, sticky once again today. And that means that we could even break some more records. The record for Mobile this afternoon, 94 degrees set back in 1961. We're supposed to get up to about 93, so it's going to be close. It could tie it. And Pensacola, your record 92, so you may tie it or break that as well. Forecast through the next few hours, though, showing even though it's going to be a hot one, lunchtime, the clouds start to build, and after lunch, we keep the chance of scattered showers and thunderstorms. Rain chances here around 30% or so. Remember yesterday, we got some stronger thunderstorms, even with some reports of hail. That's possible today, but not overly likely. So there's a slim chance you could see some gusty winds or hail from some of these thunderstorms. But overall, I think a lot of us just dealing with the typical summertime showers and thunderstorms 
even though it is the first weekend of fall. Today's highs back into the lower mid 90s. That's what you're going to be noticing most of the day, along with some of those scattered showers and thunderstorms during the afternoon. Tonight we'll have a few lingering showers, but overall it becomes quiet with temperatures in the lower 70s. Head into tomorrow. Very similar today, although I think we see a few more clouds and it stays a little cooler. Highs back into the upper 80s and really Tuesday. That's when we see that front that I showed you off towards the west towards Texas. It starts to pass through on Tuesday and by Wednesday the dry air settles in behind that front and that could actually mean cooler temperatures and by cooler I mean close to average. Remember we're supposed to be in the mid 80s this time of year and mid 90s are well above average for us. And when that cool front comes in what are the odds of getting some early morning very dense fog maybe Tuesday morning into Wednesday? That is possible especially when you look at Tuesday into Wednesday because we could get some rain Tuesday that will help create the make the ground really moist and then once you get that cooler air over top of the warm moist ground that could really be a problem with fog so we'll keep an eye on that as it goes closer. And we're also shooting for maybe a record breaking or a record tying <laughs> temperature today. What yeah. is the sensor or spot that is the spot of record that will have to make that difference? Is that the airport? Is it downtown Mobile? We uh, I've been using the airport. There are different locations but what we typically use are the airport locations for our station um, um, and that would be the regional airport at Mobile as well as uh, Pensacola's airport as well. All right, we'll keep an eye on it. Thank you so very much, Melissa. And this has been an Eastern Shore tradition for 28 years now, even in the heat we had yesterday. The annual Jubilee Festival is this weekend in Daphne. Runs from 10 until 5 today. Dozens of vendors are lined up along Main Street in downtown Daphne, where you can find arts, crafts, food, games. Desiree Smith is the owner of Totally Stamping. They make homemade greeting cards, and she says it's a great tool for getting back in touch with friends and family. I think, I think what we've, what's happened is we've kind of lost touch with the art of getting personal with people, with cell phones and you know emails, and this is a way to reconnect on a real personal level back with your family, your friends, and it's, I mean, it's great. Today you can catch the Dogwood Trail Maids at noon. The Eastern Shore Dance Academy will also be performing at 1 this afternoon with a few other performances between noon and 3. History wasn't just made in Criola this weekend, it was also preserved. The Mobile County Commission dedicated a park to Juanita Hall Crenshaw. 80-year-old Juanita Crenshaw is the great-granddaughter of former slaves Esquire Andrew and Julia Jackson. They moved to Creola from Virginia and Georgia before settling on the same land the park sits on today. That was way back in 1891. When they got here, they found some friendly people, big land owners. And they welcomed them and accepted them. And they got started from there. And if you want to check the place out, the park is along Gunnison Creek, where there's swimming, fishing, and kayaking. Also, the wooded area offers nature trails that are handicap accessible. Well, coming up, handrails have to keep their hold to be helpful. We got some helpful hints and tips from Danny Lipford. That'll be coming up next. Time now. Check your watch. 642 on this Sunday morning. Does your old heating and air conditioning system need to be replaced? Call ARS Rescue Rooter. Right now, we're offering up to $1,450 off on new system purchases or no interest, no payments for a year. Call ARS Rescue Rooter today for a no-cost, no-obligation estimate. Visit ARSFortWalton.com. It's hurricane season. How will your doors and windows stand up to a major storm? Call Folkers Window Company, the storm protection experts, for a free inspection. Folkers can replace those old worn out windows and doors, making your home more secure, energy efficient, and protect you in case of a storm. Folkers windows are designed to withstand winds up to 200 miles an hour and are certified by the U.S. government to be bomb blast resistant. At Folkers, buy three windows, doors, or shutters, get one free. Call Folkers today for your free estimate. Gulf Shores and Orange Beach are dedicated to creating a fun and safe time for you at our beaches. Here are a few measures to keep the beach safe and clean. There is no glass allowed on the beach. Tents must be kept behind the marker posts and all items left on the beach will be removed and discarded one hour after sunset. These measures will help keep our beaches clean, our native turtle population safe, and your stay here as memorable as ever. Remember to leave only footprints. 
The Baldwin County Home Builders Association is proud to open the doors for the 27th Annual Parade of Homes. This Saturday and Sunday from 10 a.m. till 5 p.m., you can tour 38 homes with the latest innovations and design trends in homes of all sizes and price ranges. Visit the showcase home built by Truland Homes in the Greenbrier at Firethorn Community in Fairhope. Get your parade map online at bchba.com or by visiting any of the parade homes. Living in Baldwin County, it's a lifestyle. <laughs> Come on. Dogs just won't quit. Neither does new Frontline Gold. Its triple action formula is relentless at killing fleas and ticks for a full 30 days. Good boy. Go for the gold. Join us in the fight against cancer at the American Cancer Society's Vintage Affair Gala, presented by Lexus of Mobile. Enjoy an evening filled with exquisite cuisine by Clifton Morissette, fine wines from Red or White Wine and Gourmet Center, and the exciting sounds of the Crown Jewels Band. Sure to thrill are the live and silent auctions, which include fabulous trips, estate jewelry, and original local art featuring artist Ashley Terrell. So come on out Thursday, September 29th at the Alabama Cruise Terminal from 6 till 9 p.m. For ticket information, visit vintageaffairmobile.org. If you have a problem with your heating, your AC, or your plumbing, go to ARS.com slash Tebow, and they're going to give a portion of the proceeds to the Tim Tebow Foundation. And together, we're going to change thousands of lives for people with special needs all over the world. Come on, let's make a difference. Good morning to you, Gulf Coast. Here's a quick look outside. One of our News 5 HD Sky cameras taking a look at a very pretty sunrise out there on Orange Beach this morning. It'll be a good day for the beach today because it's kind of warm out there today. Even starting out, it's warm. It's warm outside, still warm outside, and maybe not too hot for some home improvement, though. In this hour's Ask Danny, Robert writes, how can I attach a wood handrail post to concrete? If you're not as lucky as these homeowners and could mount your handrail post right down into the ground, then it's a lot easier than you think to mount it to concrete. This is one of the things that makes it really easy. It's just a post bracket that attaches right to the concrete. Then you can put your post in place, even trim it out to make it look great. How do you attach that to the concrete? Well, that's pretty easy as well. It's a lead anchor, basically a threaded sleeve, that you use a hammer drill and a sharp masonry bit to drill down into the concrete. You tap this in place. Then when you attach the bracket with your screws or bolts, it expands that lead anchor just a little bit, and that's where all of the strength comes in. And it makes it real easy to have a very strong post and one that will last for a long, long time. And we'll have more tips in our next hour of News 5 this morning. For tips anytime, you can hit up Danny Lipford on the web at his website, todayshomeowner.com. Now, News 5 Sports. So in sports, if you missed South Alabama's game against Nickel State last night, you missed a classic. South jumped on top early, building a 23-0 lead before Nichols stormed back to make it 24-23 at the half. Such a close game. The second half ended with both teams tied and the game heading into overtime. Xavier Johnson ran it in from four yards out to give South the lead, but Nichols came right back with a touchdown and they went for the win with a two-point conversion. The Jags defense came up big, stopped that two-point conversion, and South wins it 41-40. to it, it was ugly in some ways. We made enough mistakes to get us beat. Um, uh, but, you know, Nichols had a lot to do with that. They, they have a good football team. We knew that. Real scrappy. Um, my hat's off to them, and, uh, but also proud of our guys for coming up and winning it. When the game was definitely on the line, I think, with a minute and ten left in the game. Got to make plays. If you don't, you lose. Oh, that was a big win, a big win. Uh, it showed our, our character and that we're not going to quit. We're going to keep finishing to the end. South improves to 2-2 two and two on the season. They're at home next Saturday night against San Diego State in the Hall of Fame game. Another exciting finish last night on the Plains. Auburn and LSU with time running out. LSU appears to score the winning touchdown, but... Hold the phone. The refs started the clock before LSU could get the playoff. The touchdown is called back, and Auburn wins it 18-13. Daniel Carlson kicked six field goals to account for all of Auburn's scoring. Up next for Auburn, they host Louisiana Monroe at Jordan-Hare next Saturday. 
Top ranked Alabama hosting the golden flashes of Kent State Saturday and as expected the tide rolled. Freshman quarterback Jalen hurt so good accounted for two touchdowns as did running back Joshua Jacobs. Alabama built a 41 nothing halftime lead and cruised to a 48 nothing win. By the way, Kent State is Nick Saban's alma mater, which uh, might explain why they only scored one touchdown in the second half. Maybe. Don't know. Up next for the Tide, an SEC matchup in Tuscaloosa Saturday against the Kentucky Wildcats. In Knoxville Saturday, another big SEC matchup with the Tennessee Volunteers and the Florida Gators. Both teams ranked in the top 25. It looked like the Gators would win their 12th in a row against the Volunteers, but Tennessee scored 38 unanswered points to win it 38-28 in front of a packed house in Neyland Stadium. Tennessee quarterback Joshua Dobbs led the Bulls to five touchdowns in the second half for the win. Meanwhile, the Ole Miss Rebels snapped an even longer losing streak against Georgia Saturday. Quarterback Chad Kelly threw for 282 yards and two touchdowns and ran for another score as Mississippi beats Georgia 45-14. It was Georgia's first loss of the season. They also lost star running back Nick Chubb, who hurt his ankle in the second quarter and never returned. All right, get ready for an afternoon full of NFL action here on News 5 today. At noon, the Cincinnati Bengals try to change their luck against the Denver Broncos. They've lost five of their last six to Denver. Then at 3.30, Pennsylvania bragging rights are on the line in Philadelphia as the Eagles host the Pittsburgh Steelers. Steelers, they have won two of the last three games against the Eagles. It's an end of an era later this morning as broadcasting legend Charles Osgood signs off as host of CBS Sunday Morning. T Tony DiPullo uh, has more on Osgood's big farewell, including his TV exit interview with Scott Pelley. I want them to think that I'm just a person and talking to them. Charles Osgood was talking to CBS Evening News anchor Scott Pelley when he made a surprising revelation. Osgood approached his broadcast to millions like a conversation with an audience of one. I can tell you the name of the person I'm talking to. It's my sister. We were born in the same year. Irish twins, they, they used to call us. When Osgood signs off tomorrow, he will leave behind the most watched Sunday morning news program. I'm stopped on the street often people say you're that guy from CBS and I say yes and they say oh I love Sunday morning <laughs> not the CBS <laughs> evening news not 60 minutes they always say I love Sunday morning Pelly wondered if Osgood could explain the show's appeal they find it when they get up on a Sunday morning and the first thing they think of is not uh, I wonder what the troubles are in the world today I think they get up and they want to they want to watch something pleasant and expresses some of the some of the better parts of uh, of our nature. As for Osgood's own nature, it's always been hard to define. Last Poet and leader. author, musician and newsman. Do you remember the first piece he did for television? No. <laughs> <laughs> On Sunday's special broadcast, Manor. colleagues will tell the story of a man who's been before. telling other people's stories for more than 50 years. I never for a moment felt as if I wasn't hanging on by my fingernails. There's a name for that. They call it an imposter sy syndrome. But viewers knew he was the real thing. Some have begun to say goodbye on social media. Filmmaker Ken Burns summed up the loss for many. Sunday mornings without Charles Osgood? Hard to believe. Hard for Charlie, too. I'm going to miss it. I have to tell you, I'm going to miss this job. You'd do it forever. I, I would. And I've got to be drifting along. Tony DeCopel, CBS News, New York. The Big Bang Theory, weekdays at 3 on WKRG News 5. Enjoy smoked barbecue and local seafood at Catfish Junction. Or let us cater your next event or host your special occasion in our spacious banquet room. The Catfish Junction, a local favorite. I-65 and exit 13 in Saraland. Let me tell you about Carlos. Carlos was struck at a crosswalk by a bus that failed to give him the right of way. Unfortunately, the doctors had to amputate Carlos's leg. And even worse, since Carlos is legally blind, the insurance company tried to hold him at fault. But the lawyers at Green and Phillips didn't see it that way. We found the evidence that ripped apart the insurance company's case piece by piece, and we made them pay big. If you've been injured, call Green and Phillips now and get the green guarantee. 
Good sir, dost thou question the might of Purolator? I'm not questioning the might. Thine engine shall be protected up to 15,000 miles. Nothing gets by Purolator, nor Sir Hammond of the East. Cool. That's... Nothing get by Jacques either. You must choose this one because nothing gets by Purolator. Got it. Mm. Ah. Get your game face on, because everything's on sale at Palmer's Toyota Superstore. Palmer's is selling off our entire 2016 starting lineup. Drive Prius for $367 a month. Catch a great deal on over a thousand new and used vehicles. Plus, the 2017s are rolling in and on sale. Drive new 2017 Tacoma Double Cabs for $158 a month. Come see us today at Palmer's Toyota Superstore, the family store. You gotta see this place. I love you so much. That's why I bought six of you, for when you stretch out. I want you to stay this bright blue forever. That's why you'll stay in this drawer, forever. I can't live without you. And that's why I'll never, ever wash you. Protect your clothes from the damage of the wash with Downy Fabric Conditioner. It not only softens and freshens, it helps protect clothes from stretching, fading, and fuzz. So your favorite clothes stay your favorite clothes. Downy Fabric Conditioner. Wash in the wow. Enjoy smoked barbecue and local seafood at Catfish Junction. Or let us cater your next event or host your special occasion in our spacious banquet room. The Catfish Junction, a local favorite. I-65 and exit 13 in Saraland. I really like that you guys are really up on the weather. And make sure to watch CW55 News at 9. Now, Melissa Constanzer with First Alert Weather. Starting things off with a look north from in, from Dolphin Street, rather, on Interstate 65, and you're taking a beautiful view at mostly clear blue skies. Only a couple of clouds out there, and things relatively quiet this morning, at least on land. There are some thunderstorms out in the Gulf. Right now, temperatures hanging out in the 70s. These are going to be the big story for the day, because while we're in the 70s and 60s now, we're headed into the lower and mid 90s. It's going to be another hot afternoon, just like what we saw yesterday. In fact, some of those records could actually be tied or broken again. So today's highs again back into the lower and mid 90s. Still some scattered showers and thunderstorms this afternoon. Rain chances are around 30% and we'll keep that rain chance again tomorrow. But we start to cool things off heading into the rest of the work week. Thank you, Melissa. Coming up in our next hour of News 5 this morning, Sunday, dash cam and body cam video of a deadly police shooting in Charlotte, North Carolina is released. But what does it tell us? We've got that story and more coming up in hour number two of News 5 this morning, Sunday.